welcome to worship for Sunday, September 27th. May the strength of God pilot us. May the power of God preserve us. May the wisdom of God instruct us. May the hand of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the shield of God defend us. May the host of God guard us against the snares of evil and the temptations of the world. May Christ be with us, Christ before us, Christ in us, Christ over us. May our salvation, O God, be always ours, this day and forevermore. Amen. Words attributed to St. Patrick from the 5th century. If you have a copy of Voices United with you, or if you can follow along in words that are provided, I'm going to invite us to sing. I'm going to invite Beth McIntosh to sing and to lead us in music. And if you would like to turn in Voices United number 650 and sing together as much as we can sing together, sit number 650, O God of Beth, verses 1 and 2. Welcome, welcome to this online presence of Trinity United Church in Edmonton. We are a community of faith seeking by the love of God and in relationship with each other and with others to help create a more just and harmonious world. May it become so. We are an affirming congregation seeking the inclusion and the participation of all without regard to sexual orientation or gender expression. May all know and understand that we are not alone and that all indeed are welcome. When we worship, when we are together to worship, and now when we are separated to worship, we begin our time of worship by lighting the Christ light. Doing this, we remember that the light of Christ shines in our midst, shines in the space between us, and shines within us. Trinity United Church is a community of faith. We believe that the earth is God's, and all who dwell upon the earth are called on to care for the earth, and to live as neighbors with each other. The land where we meet, the land where we are found, is part of the traditional territory and is the home for generations past, present, and yet to come of those peoples of First Nations which signed Treaty 6, likewise the traditional territory 
of the Métis Nation. We remember that Treaty 6 was signed in 1876 at Fort Carleton and at Fort Pitt. It was signed between Cree, Assiniboine, Ojibwe peoples, and the Crown. Therefore, we are all part of the treaty. May God then help us to be good and respectful neighbors with each other. May God help us to live with respect in creation. Coming together, worshiping as we do. Let us listen for the Spirit. Hear our words from a mystic of the 13th century, Mactilde of Magdeburg. O burning mountain, O chosen sun, O perfect moon, O fathomless well, O unattainable height, O clearness beyond measure, O wisdom without end, O mercy without limit, O strength beyond resistance, O crown beyond all majesty, the humblest thing you created sings your praise. And let us sing praise. Our hymn 650, O God of Bethel, turn to that song again at number verses 3 and 4. There are two scripture readings for us today. The first reading is taken from the letter to the Philippians, reading in the second chapter, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, make my joy complete be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you, that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, and being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth 
and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The second reading is found in the Gospel according to Matthew, reading in chapter 21. Looking for chapter 21 in my Bible here. Um, reading verses 23 to 32. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you a question. If you tell me the answer, I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven? Or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say, from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say, of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for they regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said, that, said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and he went. The father went to the second and, uh, and said the same. And he, sir, had, and he answered, I go, sir. But he did not. Which of these two? did the will of his father. And they said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. So here ends these readings, which are part of our sacred story. Thanks be to God. Amen. By what authority are you doing the things that you do? That's a question that's just set for digging in a conflict. Jesus came to the temple in Jerusalem. And there he was, uh, and that's where they asked what he was doing, why he was doing it, and by what authority he was doing it. This is a question that's ripe for conflict. It's setting up a conflict. So let's look at what's happening. Let's look at what's going on in this situation. Jesus, along with his disciples, had been traveling to Jerusalem. The way the Gospel tells it, it almost seems as if Jerusalem was something of his destiny. He had to go to Jerusalem. Now, that's partly not really surprising, as Jerusalem was the religious center for his people. They got to Jerusalem, when they went to Jerusalem, they made their first stop, the temple. The temple, the grand, wonderful temple in Jerusalem. And when they went inside the temple, there they saw many, many people buying and selling animals for sacrifice. Also among them were those who were changing coins from the Roman coins to the temple currency. Now, all of this had become normal practice within the temple. But when Jesus saw it, he was upset by it. 
He sensed that the temple, this great, massive, wonderful house of prayer, had become something else instead. So that's when he overturned and upset all of the tables and the stalls of those who were selling animals from the, uh, to, to those who were coming to the temple. And he drove them out of the courtyard in the temple. And then in his anger, he left the temple and he went out and cursed a fig tree because it didn't have any fruit on it. That's the situation. This is the place now where Christians would usually say the Jewish temple authorities were the bad ones. They had been corrupted, or at the very least, they were somehow playing into a whole system with the Roman government and the Roman Empire just as a means of staying alive, whatever that was about. Maybe they were just trying to hold on to their own religion, and, and that meant they had to come up with some kind of extra money, some extra kind of tax that they had to pay off Rome so that they could continue. I don't know if that's the case or not, but I can imagine some of those sorts of things being in place. It's all complicated. It's all very complicated for us to see the big picture of how these kinds of things work out. It's difficult in our present day and our present political structures and all that. It's especially difficult when we're looking at it from 2,000 years of history. But there was a conflict. And usually when there's a conflict, it doesn't just go away. Jesus returned to the temple. And the people who were at the temple asked him, who gave you this authority to do what you've done? Even just teaching in the temple, who gave you the authority even to do that? Well, Jesus gave them an answer by asking them another question. He asked them a question about John the Baptist, and it kind of quieted them because they didn't know how to answer. But neither did it really advance anything either. Later he spoke, first I thought he was speaking just to his disciples, but as I read it again, he's speaking to the authorities as well. And he told them a little parable. A family with two children, and they had chores to do. They were asked to, to go do their chores. Go and help where they were needed. One of them said yes, but didn't follow through. The other one said no, but relented and went and did what was needed. So, which one did the will of the Father? Which one did what was needed? Well, it's a fairly obvious kind of question, an obvious story about what's going on. And indeed, there are times when we need to cut through everything to remember what indeed is most important. That's kind of where Jesus was doing, cutting through everything to get at what was most important. The message of love, indeed, needs to be what is most important. Turn around. Turn around and turn away from those things that hurt yourself and hurt others, and instead turn to the ways of love. That was the message of John the Baptist. Jesus spoke about John the Baptist in the question that he asked of those temple authorities. John the Baptist, that was the message that he was giving. And it wasn't a new message, but he was giving it again, and people were listening to it, and people were coming out into the wilderness where he was preaching and talking and, and teaching and baptizing, and they were listening to him. Because John had figured out, again, again, it wasn't a new, new message, but he had heard it again and he was telling it again, what was the most important? I wonder what, what happened with Jesus in the temple. Was that he realized that what was going on in the temple and 
what was most important was getting lost with everything else that was going on in the temple. In the temple, there was this whole system of sacrifices that was being made, and people would buy animals to be sacrificed as their religious obligation. So there was a whole system that was built up. This whole system of sacrifices was indeed set up and built on the idea of the faithful people coming, making a sacrifice, and making that sacrifice as a sign that they were turning, and they were turning toward following the laws and keeping the ways of love. That's what it was built on. But like any institution, the church included, sometimes that most important message can get lost in the institution itself. It's always a challenge within the church, that's our institution, for us not to lose sight of what is most important, the message of love. Turning away from those things that hurt us, hurt others, turning toward the ways of love. Now, in all fairness, we need to recognize that Judaism itself, religion of the temple, was in a difficult time. And by the time Matthew's Gospel was being written and being read by the faithful, the Roman government had had enough of them in Jerusalem. And by that time they had come in and they had destroyed the city, leveled the temple, leveled the buildings, and the Judaism that was to survive, in order to survive, had to develop new ways of being new ways of being faithful because the old temple institution was gone. And that's a struggle for them, but that's an important part of the story that we need to remember as well. What's most important? What is the most important? I want to come back to the letter to the Philippians, which I read earlier, because that's a wonderful piece of scripture, and it's important to hear those words again. I think that when Paul was writing to this new church in Philippi, what he was doing was trying to instill in them the most important message. Because that's what you do when you're starting a new community, or when you're trying to reform an, a, an existing community. You come back to the most important message. Go back to the very basics. And they needed to hear for themselves that old message of turning from the ways that hurt yourself and hurt others and turning toward the ways of love. Let me read that portion from the letter to the Philippians again. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation of love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, Make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, um, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And here we begin part that's an old, old hymn, older than the letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. I think there is so much in that reading. I take a little caution with it 
understand? When we hear words like, regard others as better than yourselves, you have to be careful with that, because you can take it the wrong way. But I do see it as an extension of those words where it says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. I think that's where it comes from. I think in here, just as in the other Gospel reading, there's a message for our day and for our age. A message that has been there for all ages. When you look to the needs of others, when we see with the eyes of compassion, when humility, not humiliation, humility is the word, is in this, in this world, humili humility in this world is our path, then we indeed honor God and God's faith in us. We honor Jesus' message in his life and death and resurrection. Blessings to you this day and every day as you follow this path. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. If you have Voices United, it's at number 664. And so let's sing that and Beth will, will, uh, will, join, will lead us. Thank you for continuing to support the ministry of Trinity United Church and the ongoing work of the United Church of Canada through your gifts both to Trinity United Church 
and to the Mission and Service Fund of the United Church. So today we offer our gifts. And there are gifts of money that can be made in many differing ways, as you see in the Trinity Times each week that's published. But indeed, instead, in, in addition to that, there are also gifts of time and attention and concern and care. And those are part of the offerings of our everyday lives. There are things that we do, there are times that we raise our voices, there are times that we offer prayer. In the name and in the spirit of Jesus, we bring these gifts to God. For the blessing of this and of all of our days, we thank you, gracious God. Accept, we pray, not just the offerings of money that we make, but also of our lives freely offered in gratitude for all that you do for us and have done for us. Bless and use all that we offer in this place and wherever you make it might take us. Amen. Gathered in this manner, distanced though we are, let us join our hearts in prayer. O God, as we are in our homes, as we may go to our work, as we go our separate ways and differing ways in this coming week, we ask you to send the Holy Spirit into our lives. Open our ears that we may hear what you are saying to us in the things that happen to us and in the people that we meet. Open our eyes that we may see the needs of people around us. Open our hands that we may do our work well and help when help is needed. Open our lips that we may tell the good news of Jesus and bring comfort, happiness, and laughter to others. Open our minds that we may discover new truth about you and the world. Open our hearts that we may love you and others as you have loved us. We pray for the people that we know, for the situations that touch our hearts most closely. We remember beloved family members, friends. We pray for those news items that we hear, and we pray for people that we do not know. We pray in the name and in the spirit of Jesus, and we say his prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and forever. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining us in this online presence of Trinity United Church. Do stay connected with one another. Reach out to one another in love and concern. And receive this blessing as you go into the coming week. May the blessing of God, the giver of every good and perfect gift, and of Christ who summons us to service, and of the Holy Spirit who inspires generosity and love, be with us all. Peace be with you. Amen. As final music, if you care to join in, the uh, postlude music was from Voices United at number 685, O oh, Love That Wilt Not Let Me Go. 
658.